With Mr. Roger Norrington, I had a rehearsal with, with the Zurich Kammer Orchest Orchestra. Orchestra rather than orchestra, because we're speaking English. Mm. And um, I, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the way you engage with orchestras. This is your orchestra, you know them well, but you haven't seen them for a little while. Mm -hmm. So when you come in first rehearsal, um, you go around kissing everybody. <laughs> I don't remember Toscanini doing that. Well, he should have. And also, he was working with big, big orchestras. You know, this is a this is a small little. It takes a long time to kiss the whole Berlin Philharmonic. Um, and would you want and, to? And, and would you want to? Mm. Um, but um, no, the, the, these these are friends. I mean, a small a small orchestra like this. It, it's really um, it's really a group of friends. And uh, although I've only been, this is my first season. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we we feel we know each other quite well, and it's yeah, it's it's an intimate business making music in a, in the chamber orchestra. The chamber orchestra is, is, is a big. It's a big chamber group, isn't it? It's a big yeah. string quartet. Yeah. And um, and it's we, we we have to know each other quite well. It's like a family dinner. Yes, like a family dinner. Yeah, yeah. And the second thing you do is kick your shoes off. Yes, I, I really do prefer to. I do that with all orchestras. I mean, right, but not in concert. You do uh, no, in no, in fact, not in, only in the opera. In the opera, where, right. I, where I can't be seen. Yet. I just feel much better with with my with my, with my toes on the on right. the deck. Yes, you know. It's, um, and, and your influence has been so great that in one season you've managed to get the concertmaster to take his shoes off as well. Is it really? Is he, did he do yeah, that? Yeah, he was perfect. I'm very, very glad about that. Mm. But there's, a, there's, a, there's a concert violinist who, who plays backward as well. I like working with her. She's, she's very good. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's, um, it's, a fun, it's a fun business working with the chamber orchestra. I mean, a big orchestra, you know, there's a, mm. there's a big distance to, to be seen and you use a baton yep. and, you, and you, you have to as it were, exert your influence. But with a small group, you, you, you bring them to you and it's, it's very relaxed. I never use a baton with, with tiny, tiny groups. It, it, it looks, looks silly, I think. Mm. Look, turns you into a field marshal with a, with a small group of people. And the first thing you do, instead of lecturing, <laughs> as some of our dear colleagues do, <laughs> is just get them to play. Yeah. Because you want to hear what they make of the thing yeah. before you do anything to them. Yeah. Or with it. Well, I mean, and, and often, I mean, uh, they can play their way through a whole piece. I mean, yesterday we were doing a very difficult Stravinsky piece, mm. which, which is notable for its, for its um, complications. But when there's, a, when there's a piece of Mozart or Haydn, we can play through a whole movement and it'll be all already very good. Mm. Because they know the style and it's going to, we're going to use. So right. Yeah, playing and playing and playing and playing and correction here and there. Mm. Mm. So it, you're rather like, you're, you're the sort of master chef, um, where the, the sous chef has already yes, done the they work can, they and can then you just come in and... and yeah, they um, can, they can, I mean, they can do it, let's face it. Any orchestra actually can play um, a lot of pieces that are really, really hard mm. um, with changes in tempo. They can, they can play them without a conductor. I mean, right. there's, a, there's a very good... Uh, there's a couple of orchestras who play without kind of one in New York, and uh, oh, and then there's the Spiro Mirabilis who yes. are amazing, yes. you know, and, they, and they just work it out. Yeah. It takes them a week, though. It takes them seven days to do one symphony. Mm. And we could probably do a symphony in half a rehearsal. So is that's that, the difference. Is, I mean, is that you think a process of musical evolution? I mean, when when you started out in the sixties, do you think there were musicians who were capable of doing that, who were um, oh, yes. without working? on that sort of scale without conductor? I'm not sure that they, they could certainly work on that scale, mm. um, but, but whether they would know enough mm. is a question. And what was rather, rather marvellous about Spiro Mirabilis was that they, they chose all the right tempi of Beethoven. I mean, they were absolutely spot on. And they also chose to play with pure tone, which is because they think that's what was used in Beethoven's time, so they were very well informed. When you say the right tempi, you mean the tempi well, that the you agree with? No, the te no, no, the right tempi. I mean Beethoven's tempi. Right. Beethoven wrote a metronome yeah. for every the single number. movement, you see. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people just sort of think, well, I'll do it differently, or, or, or the tradition has grown to do it much slower or whatever. But I mean, they always sound wonderful at, the, at, at his speeds. There's always you think, yes, mm. yes, that's right, you know. And, um, and they, they automatically seem to do that. I asked them about it. I said, you know, why do you, why, why do you, why, why do you use these tempi? Well, they're Beethoven's. Absolutely correct answer. <laughs> I wish a few more conductors knew that. So, I mean, no, they're not my tempi. Absolutely mm. not. No, no. 
I think it's always about you're always trying to find out the facts, you know. How big was an orchestra? How did they sit? Mm. Um, what speed did they go? What sound did they make? What kind of gesture did they automatically expect? Um, I, I want the facts. When you've, got, when you've got all the facts, that's already a terrific amount. Yeah. You know, it's, it's driving on the left all the time if you're in England and, and, and stopping at the lights and, you know, automatic getting those things right. Then you can put maybe a bit of your, your fancy in, you know, but it mustn't mm. be all, all fancy and just... I decide, you know, the composer should decide. You're, you're very suspicious of Italian words in the score, um, allegro, rondo, you, you mm. like, like honest English words like fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not suspicious of them. Especially if they're written by a Russian. Well, I mean, well, I mean he, he, Stravinsky put rondo in, in one of these books. It's not a rondo at all. That's why I'm not suspicious, he's but, just wrong. But how do you know it's not a rondo? I mean, well, what, what, what do you mean by, well, it, you know, it might be a rondo in Russian. It might, might be. <laughs> The word is Italian. No, rondo means you have a tune and then you go off to another bit and you come back to the tune yep. and then you come back to the tune. So it keeps coming back. And this one doesn't. So that's so why it's not a rondo. So but wrong. I'm not suspicious of Allegro and Andante and Lento and all those. They're very useful. Right. Very, very handy. Right. You haven't done this piece since it's April 94. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> that's a Stravinsky one. The Stravinsky one, yeah. Has it changed? No. No, it's absolutely. Um, it, I mean, Stravinsky is pretty, you know, pretty. Yeah. Pretty organised. It's true that he, when he conducted the pieces, he did he did change them a bit. He did, but he has the right to do so. Mm. But no, I mean, most pieces are, are pretty, are pretty straightforward. I don't search for new ways to do things, you know. Mm. So, it's the same with with the Mozart uh, piano concerto, which we're going to do uh, now. Mm. Um, it's the, the, the. I'm looking for the. For the what Mozart would have expected mm-hmm. when he wrote Andante, he didn't mean slow. He meant yeah. move along. You know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and when he so Mozart him, didn't know Italian either. Uh, he Mozart knew Italian extremely well, <laughs> extremely well, because he worked in Italy a lot. Mm. Now Andante means move along. It means andare. Andare means to go. Mm. But it, it sort of it sort of changed meaning in the nineteenth century and got slower. Mm. People thought it sort of it meant sort of slow. Um, but it doesn't. It's, it mo- means move along. When Mozart says più andante, more andante, he means faster. Right. When Sibelius says più andante, he means slower. That's what, that's what happened. Okay. And you can see it from the metronome marks in, in Sibelius. Right. Andante became a kind of slow tempo in the 19th century. Mm. But it didn't mean that in Mozart's time. That's, had, what, that's what I meant about you being suspicious of the time. No, 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 no. I'm not suspicious of them. I'm on their side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely. They, they mean what they say. Adagio doesn't mean slow either. Hmm. It means take it easy. Yeah. Adagio it means take sit, sit comfortably. Have a drink. <laughs> uh, lento means slow. And it's very uh, rare to, to find in a, in, a, in a classical piece. I mean, you don't. There are no lentos in some pieces. Yeah. You get adagio, which means on the slow side. And the reason is very interesting, but very obvious in a way. There are no slow movements in Mozart and Haydn and Beethoven because people, people felt uncomfortable with very slow movements. They were used to dancing to music. Mm-hmm. Dance was the, the way in which they experienced music. So mm-hmm. I mean, they, they heard music at the church, okay, that was rather grand to it's slow. Right. But in the, in the, their normal experience was dancing in the home, dancing in the pub, mm-hmm. dancing in the palace, um, or, or opera. Right. And a lot of the music is, is, is based on based on the dance, you know. I mean, not just the minuet and trio, which of course was a, sure. was a dance, but finales of of, of uh, Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven symphonies are often contra dances, for instance. Yeah. Sure. Haydn's last symphony, da 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 that's a contra dance. Everybody's like, ah, yeah, Nisa. Hmm. So they listen to music with their feet. But then when Mozart comes along, you can't dance that. Um, that's, far, that's much too fast to dance. Well, yeah, there, there, are other, there are other bits which, which you can't dance. We can't yeah. dance to a presto, no. Yeah. But, but a lot of the music is a dance. And in, in, the, in the operas, a lot of the music is a dance. A, a, a dance is. Yeah. And so, the, but and dance underlies it. They, they listened to music. They didn't listen to music a lot. They danced to it a lot. Right, right. They didn't sit and you know, 
concerts were rare. Mm -hmm. Dancing was every day. Mm -hmm. So they, they listened to music with their feet, you know. The, the dance was, dance for the 18th century was, was our television, you know. They, you know, they were ticked off for spending five, five hours a day in front of a television screen. <laughs> <laughs> Not five hours dancing again, <laughs> Morris. <laughs> Louis. <laughs> you dancing again? <laughs> it's an it's dancing again. Yes. Of course, Mozart adored dancing. His wife said, after he died, said, Mozart was very keen on music, you know. <laughs> but what he really liked was dancing. <laughs> That's the sort of thing, I mean, yeah. it underlay, it underlay the whole, the sense of movement was under, underlay. So they didn't have slow, you know, one, two, three. It just it didn't happen. And often you see an adagio, but you find it's out of breath. It's, it's, it's a C with a line through it, you know, which mm -hmm. means twice as fast. Mm -hmm. So actually it's, not one, two, three, but it's one, two. That's about as slow as you get. And it's quite important in the classical era that there's no, there's no dreariness. So Do you have to make an adjustment for tempo when you're working bit with modern instruments rather than piano? No, 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 not at all. Not no. at all. Whatever yeah, it is, it'll the be only time you might adjust is for a very, very big acoustic in a church, you know. Mm. But there's a limit to how much you can do that anyway, because the character of the music will change. Mm. So you sometimes just have to. Hope for the best. No, no, uh, modern instruments and old instruments, they're not that far apart. You know? mm. I mean, they're not really. Especially if you don't, if you don't do that kind of uh, wobbling thing. Sure. Mm. When, you, when, you, when you stop wobbling with modern instruments, uh, the vibrato thing, it so they sound extraordinarily like um, old ones. And just indeed, just they often are very old, yeah. these instruments. Yeah. Just, just to take out the vibrato. Well, it helps. Yeah. Yes. Another nasty uh, the, 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 the steel string, of course, makes a bit of a difference on the, yeah. modern, on the modern violin. But um, apart from that, they're not that different. And indeed, a lot of the instruments in modern orchestras, the violins, for instance, string instruments, are older than the instruments that have been used by early instruments. Which have been made Some of which two weeks made, ago. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So actually, you know, it, it's it's in it's in the mind. It's how you right. play how you play the music very often, you know. Rather than the age of the instrument. Yes, and that's 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 intriguing. So I mean, an orchestra like this, which is completely modern, can sound very historical so in its tempo and its seating and its and its phrasing and its and its sound. Hmm. Um, you, you could hardly tell the difference on a, on a recording. You've always been very. Um, Collaborative collegial with your musicians. I remember you know, early on at Abbey Road, I was watching a session of yours, and you came out with several of the musicians to, oh, yeah. uh, to listen to the replay. Yeah. Um, you wanted their input as much Absolutely. as as much yeah. as your own. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't know everything. Mm. You know, and, and they have to play the instruments, and so yeah, the more the more the merrier. Absolutely. But do you yeah. also argue a lot? Do you have um, no? Because uh, no, I mean. I want people to, to ask and, and to suggest things, mm. and, and really often particularly suggest them, mm. very, good, very good ideas. Um, in a very big symphony orchestra, you can't all suggest things, you just don't have time. But sometimes people come up after a and say, have you thought about doing that? And I'm always open to that. I, mean, I never think I must be right. I mean, I've got to make a decision as a mm. conductor. You've got to, you, you have got to have an answer, mm. very busy in the end, but you, you, can't, you, you, you can't be perfect, you know. You, I mean, I remember a famous story. Um, um, uh, I, I was with San Francisco Symphony, hadn't been there for a while, and they said, and they were, they were terribly quiet, and they had been the noisiest orchestra in the world. You know, they're always talking about their tax returns. And, you know, and I'd say, <coughs> excuse me, could we um, do some music now? And, but this time they were completely silent. I said, what happened? And they said, well, we had, a, we had an absolute terrible conductor last week. And he wouldn't allow any noise at all. And in, indeed, the leader of the violas got up and said, Maestro, I've got a problem with this, with the note here. He said, I make the decisions around here. So she sat down, and the violas for the rest of the week played the wrong note that was in the score. And he never noticed. So he got his, they got their own back. But I mean, I don't like that, you know, terrible silence. When, they, when, they, when you walk on, you walk on, they're completely silent. There's something wrong here. <laughs> and you know, it's a it's a collaborative thing, of which you have to be, you have to be the master, of course. But you can do it in a nice way, and you can do it in a collaborative way, and in an open way. That, so they feel as if they've got room to play. Mm. That's really important, you know, because you have to be quite demanding, 
or you don't get a good result. Sure. Sure. But at the same time, they, they need to feel that they can do it. Uh, you, can't, you can't think about how to do that, you just have to have an instinct for it. But um, one thing they never teach you in conducting school is that your first job is to make an orchestra happy, to make an orchestra enjoy themselves, make them feel it's good to be here. You know. Well, uh, in, they, in your they, time. They, they, they never tell you that. They never tell you that. I mean, mm. but, but of course it is true. I mean, it's true of any. You know, if you're if you're in class, if you're teaching in class, or if you're a, a football coach, or if you're a, um, a, a master of a big company, uh, or what? You, of course, the, the clever thing to do is to make them feel they're having a good time. We still have a few jokes, yeah. and um, we, have, we have fun, serious fun. If music doesn't sound fun, an awful lot of it is, is just fun, you know, a lot of the classical period. Mm. Wit is actually the, the subject matter, yeah. you know. Yeah. Da, 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 <laughs> and uh, if it's too serious, you know, poodle, 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 poodle. that's why slow tempo often is more boring. If it's, if it's too serious, you don't have that, that, that fun element. And I quite often say to orchestras, you know, it's mostly the Arbeit Klingen. It mustn't sound like work. It's going to sound like it's play. And it's called playing. Yes. It's not called working. Yeah. Don't, don't, work, don't, give me, don't give me this work. Give me some play. <laughs> Can you just take me on to a slightly broader issue? When you were starting out in the 60s, you were part of a revolutionary generation. And, and you were working, in a sense, in parallel to the revolution that was happening in pop music. Yeah. Everything was exploding. The Beatles, Beatles the Stones, absolutely. Yeah. all the old rules were being torn, yeah. torn up, yeah. and, and there was a tremendous sense of regeneration. And with you and, and, and others who were like-minded of the David Monroe type, yeah. there was also this sense of, of, of renewal and, and, and the possibility of, of just looking at music with completely different eyes and taking it to a completely different generation. Well, it happened in rock and pop music. It didn't happen <laughs> in classical music. Why? How do you explain that divergence? What went wrong? No, I don't think anything went wrong. I mean, uh, classical music has always been more our market. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just the, the Oh, but it was. I mean, you were playing better concerts. It's, you know, you, your audiences were... You had as many hippies in your audience as, as Bob Dylan did. Where we started, you When mean? you started, yeah. No, no. I, I didn't see them. I didn't They're all it. very respectable. I didn't now. smell the food. <laughs> 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 Remember Elvis Costello coming to me? No, I, I, I didn't have the impression that it was very, very, very hippie, I must say. I mean, that's the music is, is, it, it is, it is different from, from, from the rock music, much simpler, it's, it's exciting, it's, it's, it's physical. Uh, but but the, the, the fun of classical music is also about you, know, that you, you, you can think you can think during it as well. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's like um, uh, a, a, a cheap thriller or, or Jane Austen. You know, I mean, Jane Austen is exciting, but it's exciting for people who, who want to use a little bit of a little bit of brain power and a bit of, bit of thought and a bit of recognizing themselves in it. You know, and not just a, a sort of it's 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 higher than the than, than the earth. Mm -hmm. A lot of pop music lives, it dwells and in, in, and enjoys and thrives in in the gutter. You know. Yes. I mean. I mean. Yes. I mean. You know. Sex pistols. Yes. It's 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 earthy. It's raunchy. It's it's rough. It's Saturday night. You know. Mm -hmm. And classical music, always until the time of Mahler, anyway tried to lift you up to some sort of higher realm, as it were. It's Sunday morning music, <laughs> not Saturday <laughs> night music. And that's fine. I mean, mm -hmm. I like both. I like mm -hmm. both. But, but it, 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 they, don't, they, don't, they don't grow together. No, but when you talk of trying to find yourself in, in music, it's easier to find yourself in music that's been written in your own lifetime than yes. music that's been written 20 years before. Oh, yes. Oh, so I mean, how, how do we convey that there's a possibility of finding yourself in the antique stuff? Yeah. Well, also, I mean, I bitterly regret the fact that, that, that almost all modern, very modern music is incredibly difficult to listen to, mm -hmm. and and extremely unattractive. So people don't listen to it. You know. It's sort of egghead stuff, mm -hmm. and I I really regret that because because it wasn't like that at Beethoven. But then it became artificially yeah. simple again with, mi with minimalism. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That that's swung that, back. That, that's okay. without, without being quite attractive enough, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's that's. A, 
clearly a regret. But no, I mean, it, it's just if you if you if you catch the if you catch the music of the past, it's a wonderful thing to catch. But not everybody does. And um, I, I I try and play it in a way that anybody who walked in from anywhere would mm. would, would find it interesting mm. and not reverential. No, but someone's just but, walked in from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and how does she find herself in a matter of serenade? Yes, well, I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's like you go to a film, you know, and it's a serious film, and you, you get it, you sort of. Right. You just get so it. So why, if it's a serious piece of music, don't you get it? Well, many it's, people it's do. Look at the look at the look at the, look at the proms. I mean, seven thousand people. Mm. They seem to have been pretty but serious. The proms is the exception that proves the rule. Yes. Well, yeah. I don't know if it proves the <laughs> proves the rule. There, is, there isn't a mass <laughs> yeah. audience. Yeah, mm. I mean, I, I, people talk about audiences diminishing and so on, but I mean, I've just been, the last three, four concerts I've played have all been sold, sold out, you know. Um, to, to, uh, in, in Istanbul, where there is a yeah, huge, Berlin, young anywhere. and growing audience, sure. which is just discovering well, exactly. this music. There we are, there we are. Yeah. And in Berlin, mm. two nights, uh, well, the second night was, was, was a uh, ordinary orchestra was dressed in rehearsal clothes, it was, you could just walk in. Mm. Um, and sit anywhere, um, so that was that's popular. Uh, there they were, lots of lots of young people. So the, there are there are there are audiences, and there are uh, there, you know, there, there, there are full houses. But I'm asking you for entry points. I mean, how do you yeah. have? Yeah. Where, H- how, how do you, you how do you take the first step? Yeah. I mean, how do you make your first pass at a go? Well, I mean, there it all is, you know, on the on the internet. I mean, the, you can hear anything you like on. on on YouTube, that's a great, that's a great help for it. You right. don't, what I mean is, you don't have to sit in a boring concert hall with people with ties and mm. funny people wearing funny right. tails and right. so on, which I rather, right. rather hate. So right. that's a terrific start. I mean, there it all is, you know. Yeah. Or you can, or, or on Naxos Library, you know, for twelve quid a year, you can hear anything you like. Um, mm. But you don't still don't know where to start. You know, we probably no. need the no. Roger Norrington channel on YouTube. Yeah, well, maybe we do it. Yeah, yeah, just the, the ABC. Yeah, d- just talk. Yeah, talk about. I mean, but you know, you don't have to do that with pop music. Do you? you don't have to explain it? It's usually when got words, of course. That helps. Okay, okay. But, but when when you started out, we're going back forty-five years. Yeah, even a little longer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you didn't feel that you had to bring the audience along with you because the audience was there. The whole your your the perspective and your role has changed. Um, I don't feel that. I, mm. I mean, you, you had to you had to you had to sell try and sell concerts in those days. And we would do Heinrich Schutz, not many people have heard of, of him, you know, but they mm. came along, they were attracted, and we tried to do it well and then and they, then they came some more. So I mean I don't think it's ever been particularly easy. And I don't I, I don't think of those as golden days when the audience was just there. I mean, they're just as there now as then for me. Mm. And um and that's and that's um, perhaps not more s- not so, so surprising. If you're better known, you pe- people want to hear you. But I mean, you know, I, d- I don't know how it is how, how how it is that you get into it, and whether it's really by talking. But if it is by talking, then we can and we can uh, create a series of programs mm-hmm. where we talk about about what's marvelous about it. Let's do it. All right. Let's um, start in the conversation. You know, um, let's let's talk about your particular piece and, and play yeah. it and talk about how, how it goes because the great thing about most classical music is, is, isn't very difficult. No. no. I think there's a lot of mystique, you know. You know, the, the grand conductor stands up and he, he faces away from you and you and he's doing things that he's implying somehow that you aren't good enough to understand this and that we this is something we do, you know, the mass. It's the Catholic mass in Latin, you yes. know, it's a foreign language and you you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> and if they clap, you know, if the audience clap, woe well beside them, you know. And you tell you, oh, I can't tell to turn around and stare. Mm. I mean, that's appalling. If they clap, I always enjoy. I always say thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and they did, in fact, in Istanbul. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was delightful. I mean, I, that's what they did in the 18th century. Yeah. Well, they clapped all the time. So, yeah, I'm all for making concerts more fun. And so much of it is, yeah. is actually, the music is actually conversation. So much is dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. of a kind that you wouldn't expect if you put on the Vivaldi double or the Bach double. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. This is so often a chat between teacher and pupil, yeah, or father and son. Yes, yes, it's exactly. a cross-generational transfer. 